Hey guys, in this video we're going to be checking out the HDLRC F438TX20 V2 and I did a review previously on the uh, F440TX20 which is very similar to this one basically uh, the only difference between the, that previous one and this one is the uh, 4 one EC this is a 4 in one 38 amp uh, BL Heli S EC whereas the F440 was a 40 amp 4 in one BL Heli 32 ESC. So that's the, the biggest difference between the two. And as you know, these are pretty large ESCs here, and I, I know a lot of people are using these to make uh, larger 5-inch uh, builds with lighter weight components. So this using the stack here obviously will save weight using over a 30 by 30 stack, of course. And if you don't like BL Heli S, I'm sorry, if you don't like BL Heli 32 and would prefer BL Heli S, I think this is the stack for you if you're building a 5 inch build and I'm in fact I'm going to be putting this into a, a hyperlight floss build um, with some I think I'm going to probably use those BBB 1606 or 1608 motors on this particular stack which uh, you know uh, for smaller builds like a 3 or 4 inch a 38 amp 4 in AC is complete overkill and completely unnecessary so I'm going to, just going to quickly cover some of the differences between uh, the newer V2 components versus the older ones I know that uh, in the previous video on the F440 I had a lot of questions about that. I figure I can go ahead and uh, kind of address some of those questions now. First of all, let's just take a, a look at the ESCs and compare them to the old style. So here on the right is the 38 amp 4-in-1 ESC, and then here on the left this is the older style V1 uh, 4-in-1 28 amp ESC. And you can qu quickly see here uh, over here on the where the battery leads connect to they're much larger on the 38 amp, but it looks like the overall layout of the board seems to be about the same. And I'm not sure if I can capture this on camera, but the FETs are different on the, the larger 38 amp PC. And here's a look at the bottom, and again, uh, the layout looks very similar, but I believe the uh, FETs are different on the ESCs uh, for the 38 amp. Okay, so now comparing the flight controllers, these are both F4 boards. Uh, V1 on the left, V2 on the right. You can see that the solder pads on the uh, V2 are a little bit bigger. They've improved the layout. The layout's a little bit better. And um, on the bottom here, you have additional uh, solder pads on the V2 that aren't on. There's actually no solder pads on the V1. You can see here. Uh, you get some extra UARTs on the bottom here for the V2, as well as uh, the RSSI and current pads. And none of those exist on the V1. Also, you notice that the, the hole here is a little bit bigger. It's like an M2.5 hole versus an M2 hole on the V1. So I think they do that because um, they're using a new mounting system. Uh, there was a lot of complaints on the old mounting system where um, these little nylon standoffs would break in a crash. And then when, when these break, uh, these little... These pins here usually would break because uh, the, the flight controller would connect to the ECs via these pins. And so they went to a new system where they're using now the this long M2 steel screw that goes all the way up from the bottom of your um, frame, the bottom plate of your frame, along with um, some nylon spacers. And I think that's why they made the hole bigger so that there's a little bit of play in the flight controller so that not a lot of vibrations come from the steel screw from the bottom plate into your flight controller. So I think that's why the hole is a little bit bigger. And with the steel screw here, even in a hard crash, it's pretty unlikely that you're going to be breaking uh, this screw here where the flight controller will then uh, break loose from the foreign ESC and then break those pins. So uh, that's, a, that's a big complaint that a lot of people had in the uh, V1s, and I think that they addressed that here in the V2. Now the last thing that people should be aware of on the V2 TX20, uh, not only are they adding the um, Betaflight OSD control feature via the TRAMP protocol, it's not smart audio. Uh, the power, the highest output power here now goes from um, up to 350 milliwatts instead of 200 milliwatts. So that's another big improvement. However, they're still using the little micro FL connector here. I wish they would switch this to an MMCX connector. That would be much better. And of course, they're still using the whip antenna here with the micro FL connector, but I really would like to see an MMCX connector for the version 3. And then I did get a lot of questions about the how to wire this up to the flight controller, so I'll just go over that really quick. Basically the pins from the bottom to the top are all labeled here, so you get your uh, battery power coming in 
on the bottom pin, and then you have the ground, and then you have what's called OSDRX. That goes to a, a UART on the flight controller, or usually it's going to be a TX pin. And then you have 5 volts out and ground out. Those two pins are going to go to your power, usually to power your camera. And I, I usually do that. I, you can also power the camera off of the flight controller, uh, but I would rather use the, uh, there's another BEC here on this TX20 that can power the camera. That will then um, uh, reduce the power uh, output on the flight controller BEC, and you can just let that power the receiver. That's what I usually like to do. If you have extra power tapping off of this flight controller that sucks away power, um, sometimes you might have receiver fail safes uh, if your receiver happens to suck a lot of power, or if you have other devices connected to your flight controller that requires power, like LEDs, for example. So that's why I prefer to use the BEC that's on the video transmitter, and I usually connect my two wires for power, 5 volt power, to the uh, video transmitter, and then um, you power the camera that way. The last pin here, the top pin, is going to be the uh, video in from the flight controller. In this case, since we have an OSD, uh, it's going to come out from this pin right over here where it says VTX. And then this pin right here, BAT, that's going to get wired to the uh, bottom pin here on the uh, video transmitter, the 7 to 26 volts, this bottom pin here. That's, uh, that's going to be uh, providing ver basically VBAT power or uh, battery power directly from the LiPo to the video transmitter. It's just pass through here. Now if you want to wire up your camera to the flight controller instead, you could wire it up here uh, where you have uh, the uh, 5 volts and ground to the camera and then the signal from the camera, you could send it directly into here and then, then the, uh, I'll send the video signal to the OSD and then the video signal will then come out from this pad here where it says VTX and then if you have that wire to your video transmitter here where it says video, then that will then send that out to your goggles. So in order to wire up the OSD RX pin, I usually have a one wire going from that pin to uh, one of the spare UARTs on the bottom of the board here. I usually use either TX6 or RX6, which would be UART6 or UART3. And then you just go into Betaflight Configurator and set up uh, TRAMP, the protocol for the uh, Betaflight OSD control for your video transmitter. Yeah, so that's pretty much on how you would wire up the uh, TX20 to the flight controller. Uh, they, uh, unfortunately, they don't provide any of the wires for this. You'll have to supply your own wires and have that go back and forth between the video transmitter and the flight controller. So that is one kind of downside. I would wish they would provide uh, some silico nice silicone, you know, like maybe like 28 gauge wire to uh, include as part of this kit. So because obviously you have to wire this up yourself and they don't include that wire. So I'll definitely be putting this into a five inch ultralight build, probably the floss frame, uh, maybe one of the iFlight ultralight frames, I'm not sure at this point. I'll decide pretty soon, uh, but yeah, this is definitely going into a build. Anyway, it's going to do it for this video. If you have any questions, let me know, and I'll talk to you guys in the next video.